Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Yes, we are inside a bus, a Ford E450 uh, with the V10, it's a 2012. And this is at a bus garage here in Ithaca, New York. So I'm visiting my folks, doing some work here with my dad. And uh, the shop manager here, he's been on my waiting list for a while. He said, we're having problems with these buses. So <clears throat> this one has 180,000 miles and the engine was recently swapped because, you know, just wore out, lost compression, whatever. And, uh, well, after the engine swap, I had some problems, misfires. <clears throat> and he said that three buses here have about the same issue within a month of each other of getting brand new engines, the Ford V10s. So I guess the engines don't last awfully long. I mean, 180,000 miles of city driving, towing a bus, that's, that's okay. But here we are at the diagnosis. So this is bus number 189. Apparently it's the worst one. It's misfiring all the time. Feels like a single cylinder misfire. So let's diagnose this one. We have, you know, in the health report, seven codes, 300, 301, 289, 16 misfire detected on startup. Okay. Uh, on Fords, you want to go into live data or special function and then just look at the uh, power balance test. It's like a misfire counter. So I want to see, you know, out of 10 cylinders here, which ones are misfiring. Brand new engine. All right, special function, power balance test. Start engine, press OK. So let's start up. Okay, cylinder eight looks like. One, six, five, ten, two, seven, three, eight, four, Nine doesn't look very good either. You see the engine's just shaking, shaking, shaking. Put it in reverse, give it a little load. Not happy. Cylinder eight and nine. Look, nine is dead. So it looks like two cylinders here. Terrible. And then it runs like crap. Okay. So save a picture of this. And the firing order is right here. The cylinders eight and nine are on the driver's side bank towards us. Ten is the corner one here. Alright, that's the information so far. Alright, so I want to check compression on this brand new engine. So I'm gonna floor it. I'm gonna crank it. Hopefully it has a clear flood mode. Oh, we're just about done. Brand new engine is missing compression. Now we could do a relative compression test and see if those missing humps line up with the missing cylinders on the scanner. But that's it, we're basically done. We're not chasing ignition or injection or anything like that. That's pretty crazy. I don't know if these are reman engines or brand new engines. Uh, I assume it's a long block. It was installed at the dealer. They they already took it back there several times. Um, kind of crazy. So we'll look at the other buses, do the same relative compression check, see what the heck's going on. This doesn't sound promising. And the problem obviously started, like these engines run worse than the engine that was replaced. That one had a partial misfire in number four. It was losing compression. These have partial misfires on like three cylinders out of 10. All right, so I got ignition coil number 10 loosened up. So I'm going to start it up, take it out, just make sure we have spark on cylinder number 10. Yep, you can hear the spark. Cylinder 
content is definitely not contributing. So this looks like a brand new Motorcraft spark plug. Nice and clean. It is soaked in gas. So that points to a low compression issue. So let's put a cylinder transducer in number 10. Fire it up. See what happens. Here we go. Pressure hose installed on cylinder number 10. Ignition coil is obviously unplugged. Fuel injector is unplugged. Pressure transducer is on. We're using the 265 PSI unit through the Pico scope. Here's our pressure. Crank it, see what happens. Stop the recording. Let's analyze some data. So, we can definitely tell that the cylinder is sealing very well. Now, do we have excessive pressure on the exhaust stroke? Well, let's see. Fifteen psi on the exhaust stroke here. When I revved it up a little bit, but it's it's not zero. I would like to see it. I'd like to see it less than zero. Why do we have this hump here? So that's kind of suspicious, but we don't see any cylinder leakage. Because if there was, this would dip even lower down into vacuum if we lost some you know, mixture volume. So, kind of not what I expected. This is the power of the pressure transducer. If you don't have one and you have a scope, you're missing out. So this is very interesting now. Now which cylinders actually have good compression? We have all the cylinders here. We have to compare a known suspected bad to unknown good so looking at our save the screenshot here so number one six and five look okay two questionable seven looks strong three looks okay and four looks okay so we're worried about eight nine ten and two eight nine and ten are right down here Again, interesting. <laughs> Are these dormant exhaust manifolds with, uh, you know, restricted exhaust ports? We don't know yet. We have to get a known good from, for example, cylinder number five. Cylinder five has, you know, it's running fine. Looks great. Something easy to get to. So let me pop that out. And one more thing I noticed was, look, there's a brand new ignition coil, Napa, not a sponsor, on here. And this one. It looks like it might be the original. It was all dusty. That's a Ford part number. I have to rub off the dust. The boot is getting cracked. That's not good. But, you know, why were some of the coils replaced and some were not? I have no idea. So let's, uh, let me get in cylinder number five. We'll do the same test. All right, I got cylinder number five plug out. It looks nice and dry and clean. So that cylinder is definitely working. Let's, uh, also we can save some time. We can also swap the plugs and coils around here. I mean, why not? Just to rule that out. But uh, let's get the pressure transducer in number five. All right, so I reinstalled number five plug and coil into cylinder number 10. And then number five, we have the pressure transducer. Let's run the scope. Fire it up. Five PSI heat. Rev it up. Okay. Take a look at our data. So there still is a little bit of back pressure on the exhaust stroke. No problem there. Peak 
compression is a little higher, it could be cylinder wash there. Let's take another look at the at the power balance test. Maybe cylinder 10 came back to life. Alright, so let's just compare these two waveforms carefully. So this is the misfiring cylinder number 10. And you know, before we rev it up, what's the exhaust back pressure? These humps are going up to about almost 4 psi. I don't really like that. And then on a light rev, this was not wide open throttle by any means, we got little peaks up to oh, getting close to 15 psi. The engine didn't speed up that much. So 4, about 13 right there. Let's look at the known good. This is number 5, known good. Zoom in here. So while the engine is idling, we're you now maybe around 2 psi, less than 2. And on the same light rev, 5 psi. Okay, huge difference. Wow. Unexpected. Without a pressure transducer, this would be a really hard diagnosis. How can you tell that your exhaust manifold ports are restricted? Wow. I mean, it's a V10. <laughs> I don't know how they cast these manifolds. I don't know if they're dormant or not, or if they're OEM. We'll have to ask the, um, the shop owner. But that's pretty nuts. And because he can't exhaust, there's no combustion. And then the cylinder gets flooded with fuel. That's what it seems like. So let's do the power balance test one more time with the, uh, with the scanner and see if anything changed with any of the four misfiring cylinders. All right, power balance. Start the engine up. Okay. Shake it pretty hard. I mean, obviously, only one cylinder is disconnected. Five is obviously down. Eight and nine are down. What about cylinder number ten? That's somewhere in the middle. Eight and nine are still bad. Ooh. So did something change with cylinder number ten when we put the ignition coil in there? It's definitely running worse since number five is now not contributing. Very cool. Guys, cylinder 10 is back to life here under load. Eight and nine are dead. Five is obviously dead. Wow, that's pretty nuts. All right, so I'm doing this under load. I'm pulling out these ignition coils. So number 10, Definitely a change. You can see that. Okay. Let's try number five. Definitely a change. Put it back in. So number eight and number nine though. Let's pull out coil number nine. Then we have to put the in-cylinder pressure transducer on number eight and number nine. The two-cylinder misfire here. Ooh. <laughs> well, number eight, or I'm sorry, number nine looks black and wet with gas. That's not good. Let's put the pressure transducer in number nine. Pressure transducer installed in cylinder number nine. This is going to be interesting. <clears throat> so let's roll the scope. Crank it up. 
<laughs> Yay. The piston's moving up and down. Now, what's the issue? Well, so the exhaust back pressure, this is a good check to check multiple cylinders on one bank. Since we didn't, you know, the, the intake or the amount compressed volume is a compressed amount of mixture is a lot less. That means the exhaust back pressure is going to be less during the exhaust stroke. But still, it's higher than zero. So we know that cat is clogged. And we know that the exhaust valve is opening. What is causing this low compression? I mean, it's 15 psi instead of 60. Hmm. The vacuum isn't dropping either. We could do a leak down check, I guess. Borescope. It's engine mechanical for sure. On a rev, it got up to 75 instead of whatever, 130. So what are the options here? Is the intake valve not opening? Or is there massive leakage to the intake or exhaust manifold? So, you know, this diagnosis, you know, started with cylinder number 10. We saw that wasn't firing, firing uh, very well because the catalytic converter is clogged on the driver's side bank. However, a9 are completely dead in the water. 10 was contributing a little bit. We proved that. So that's where these multiple tests and multiple tools, are all the pieces of the puzzle have to fit. You do you have one finding, and yes, that may be correct, but that's not the whole story. Why are these cylinders A9 basically have almost no compression? That's an engine mechanical problem. We suspected a compression problem with the you know, just cranking the engine over, clear flood mode, yes. Um, and then it has old ignition coils. That's, you know, I don't think that's part of the problem. They're, they're all firing, even though they look, you know, the boots look cracked and whatever. That's, that's still fine. Cat is clogged on driver's side bank, on bank two. But why? Why is it clogged? Well, because gas was getting through cylinders 8 and 9, not combusting, and just going right into the cat. That's why. So, kind of a mess here. This thing might need another engine. But we have to prove where, where is this, why is it not building compression? In this case, where the whole engine was swapped, you could say, hey, we need another engine, and the shop will have to warranty this. I have to put that on the work order, on the diagnosis, and say this is guaranteed. It's, it doesn't have compression at 8 night. You can do their own, your own check. Put a compression gauge in there. That's fine. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it has to be fixed by the shop that installed the engine. Or the dealer. I think they got the engine from the dealer. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> so, what's the next check here? I want to do a clear flood crank. Keep the transducer in number 9. And that, if you know, if we see vacuum during the intake pull, that'll be an, an intake valve problem. If, if not, then um, the valves are opening fine, but they might not be sealing. So it'll be either rings or valves not sealing. All right, let's do a wide open throttle clear flood crank here. Wow, 
no compression at all. What the heck? That's insane. Or a peak. What was that? Five psi. Fantastic. So we'll save this. <laughs> wow. You know, wonder it's not firing at eight and nine. Well, I stuck a pressure transducer in cylinder number nine. Holy crap! I'm shaking the bus. That cylinder's full of coolant. <laughs> what? How? How is that possible? Oh my gosh, that's the valve. Is that a blown head gasket? That really blows my mind. Let's spin it around here. Wow. You see that? Drip, drip, drip. It's flooding the cylinder with coolant right now because the you know, the cooling system got a little warm. Wow. So bus number two, this is bus number 192, engine was replaced around the same time, has around the same mileage, it runs better than 189, 189 is comp you know, terrible, <laughs> uh, two cylinder misfire, this one shakes a little bit and on the power balance test it's showing that number four cylinder is a little weak, so put the pressure transducer in cylinder number four, we, we have a known good from the other engine on cylinder number five. So let's run this. Start it up, put it under a little load. Okay, so about 45 psi. That's that's not great. Warm idle, about 45 psi peak. We'll stop that and we'll compare to cylinder number five. And if this cylinder number four has lower compression than number five, again, engine internal problem. There'll be enough evidence for them to warranty this engine. All right, here we go. Cylinder number five. Roll the scope. Fire it up. So here's the power balance for this bus. Everything's connected. Give it a little load. It's like two and four. Four mostly is dipping down once in a while. It doesn't feel too rough, but it feels rougher than the other smooth bus. So. You know, this one's not too bad. I tell them keep driving it. Compression seems fine. It's just a little uneven.